And Richard Southern joins us from the 680 News Business Center. Hi, Richard. Hi, Fiza. How are you on this fine, um, cloudy, uh, dour Friday? I don't mind this weather is all I'm going to say. It's okay. Could be worse. No snow on the ground. We're good to go, right? Exactly. Okay, let's start with the, uh, as you like to call them, the alphabet company. Google could soon be part of our daily workout. Tell me about this. So Google has gone and bought Fitbit. You know, the Fitbit, uh, Fiza, it's that... Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you wear it on your wrist, it tracks your, your fitness, tracks your steps, right? A very popular fitness tracker. And so Google is buying that, valuing the Fitbit company at $2.1 billion. And experts say Google getting Fitbit will help it expand its um, ambient computing, as they call it. This is where, you know, a company wants to be part of users' everyday lives. They're going to know a lot more about you. If they have this watch on your wrist, you're going to be able to track your steps, your heart rate, all that stuff, right? The big story, though, is that it's going to help Google compete with Apple. Apple has this leader in the smartwatch category with its particular wearable, and so Google's going to be able to go head-to-head. -head. The big question, though, is uh, with these devices, FISA privacy and Fitbit and Google out with a statement emphasizing uh, that they're going to be transparent about uh, your uh, particular privacy. But, I mean, here's a company, Google, that knows, you know, all the web pages you go to, everything you do online, and now they're going to have even more medical information about you with the watch. So there's a lot of people worried about that. I have my Apple Watch. I don't track as much fitness as I should be, FISA. I do like tracking sleep. It keeps track of your sleep, and I find that very fascinating. You know, it's useless information, I think. I know I've been asleep, but I wake up and I look at how long I've been asleep. <laughs> and I do like the, the, I guess, the fact that they are tracking certain things from your life. That's kind of Creepy, no? And then they can, they can maybe advertise to you with that information. So that's yeah. kind of where the worry is with this sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, scrolling up and down my Facebook, it's evident someone's listening, and I think it's Google. Google is, yes, listen, always listening to you. You know, you see those ads pop up for something yes. you were looking at a day or two ago, and that gets a little freaky when that happens. Or even thinking about it. I'm like, is, does Google have access to us here? You know, there's been questions about, you know, is your phone listening to that, and is that how they're advertising to you? People have wondered about that, Liza. Okay, Richard, let's uh, move on to uh, <laughs> some uh, concerns some Canadians have, a growing number of them struggling to make ends meet. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, that's a little concerning. I mean, the question is, how much money do you have left at the end of the month after you've paid all your bills? New study from accounting firm MNP finds the average for Canadians is 557 bucks. The average Canadian walking around has $557 left after they've paid all their bills at the end of the month. That's the lowest number in years. But nearly 3 in 10, 29%, say they don't have enough money to cover the monthly expenses and therefore have nothing left at the end of the month. 41% say they have less than a week's worth of expenses saved up. And you may think, FISA, this is a problem facing those who don't make a lot of money, but that would be incorrect. 18% of those making 150 k a year or more also have a case of the shorts at the end of the month, shall we say. So even if you're making bank, it can still be tough, especially in the city, to cover the monthly expenses and have a little change left over. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to do, right? You need to get a Netflix account, an Amazon Prime account. There's just too much happening. I see, I see where your priorities are. I was thought you were going to say groceries and stuff, no. but you know. No, a girl Netflix. needs to keep up with her shows. <laughs> Movies, no. TV shows. No I'm argument good. for me. Life has gotten more expensive, but wages haven't gone up, and that's uh, the problem here, Faisal. Okay, Richard. Okay, let's not call this one a comeback, but it could be a popular gift with the holidays just around the corner. Motorola is getting set to unveil a foldable smartphone. And it's based on the Razer. Do you remember the Motorola Razer back in the day, the flip phone? I do. I it was. Yeah, it was a must-have one. What we're looking at here are leaked photos of the new Razer, or supposedly the new Razer. These haven't been confirmed. Uh, but a Motorola will be showing off its updated razor on November 13th. The outside looks just like the old one did, that clam-shaped uh, flip phone device. When you open it up, though, it's a one flat screen, similar to what you would see with today's smartphone. So a very unique type of design here. Um, the rumor is that it will have a 6.2-inch OLED screen. The specs and the price, though, we don't know yet. So do you welcome the smartphone back? I, I like the smartphone because if you had a heated conversation with someone, you could <laughs> slam it closed. The dramatic effect. Very dramatic, Fiza. Do you, do you like the smartphone? Do you welcome this? Um, I feel like it looks like it looked like 10 years ago. It looks exactly the same. It's very, it debuted in 04. This is yes. when, uh, you know, MySpace was all the rage. Oh, God. Green Day had the top album. I was checking this out earlier. So we're going back to 04, Fiza. Oh, God. Well, I, was, I was in high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lucky you. I won't tell you where I was, Pfizer, in 04. <laughs>
Okay. Um, let's talk gas prices. The weekend's coming up. What's happening there? And we're going down a, a penny uh, tonight. FISA, stay tuned. Coming up at just after 6.30, we're going to look at a wild new theme park that's planned for Japan. Ooh. It's going to feature Godzilla and a life-sized monster of him. So stay tuned for that one, FISA. All right. Thanks, Richard. We'll talk to you again in an hour. Thank you.